Let the church say amen. amen. Why don't you lift your hand and tell the Lord thank you. Thank you. Ain't God good? Yes. The title of this song that I will sing is right. Precious Lord. All right. Take my hand. I know we got some good musicians over here. How yeah. many know that God is good all the time? I want to say a few words to all the ministers on the platform and to all of you. God have this blessing. Yeah. And we just thank God for that. The title of this song that I'm going to sing today is Precious Lord, Take My Hand. Precious Lord, y'all don't hear me. Take, take my hand. Yes, lead, lead me on.
Thank you. Thank you. About 12 to 15 minutes. Ask that you would pray for us and with us. Yes, sir. We're not here to eulogize our deceased. She preached her sermon during her 90 years on this earth. It has been said, may the, what I've done, may, may the work that I've done speak for me. Sister lived well past three scores. The mother, this mother spent more than 70 years laboring in the vineyard. The Bible says go into the vineyard and work. And whatever is right, he would pay. Before I move on, let me say to the family and especially to John and Jackie and other members for looking out after my sister and your mother. All right. We're living in a day now where you become old and can't function. All right. Many times they will put you in an attic mm -hmm. and come by to see you yes, sir. every now and then. Yes, yes. Or either they will put you in the nursing home yes. and very seldom will they come by. All right. The Bible says in Proverbs 22 and 6, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he's old, he did not depart. My mother, Mrs. Sally Williams, that Reverend Sam Williams, gave birth to 14 children. And I don't remember any of us going to jail or prison. But this is a term generation. It's an ugly generation. When people can't get along together. And then I tell people all over the world that I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Isaiah 1 and 18 says, come now and let us reason again. Not the mayor, not the governor, but says the Lord. I really believe that when God looks at our world today, it grieves him to his heart. You remember when God created the heaven and the earth, and he looked at what he had made, he looked at man. And man had become so wicked, so evil, that the same thing that he made, he destroyed. Is that right? And we're living in a world today where we're destroying our. There's a scripture again in the Bible in Genesis 54 24 and 56. He says, Loose me. Let me go. Seeing that the Lord has prospered us. Now anybody who die in Christ has another home to go to. I share with our people often that that when a, when a sinner dies, he's on his way to hell. But when a true child of God goes to sleep, they're moving from the old house yeah, look out. Yeah. 
into the new house. Well, a few days ago after laboring and working yeah. and witnessing about Jesus Christ, Mother Hayden was called from labor to reward. Is that right? In other words, when a saint dies in Christ, they are not lost, but, but they have moved from the old house into a man. What a blessing. It is a fact that all of us will leave from here one day. If the Lord allows me to see me the second I'll be 80 years old, I'm not rushing to get out of here. I want to stay here as long as I can. But if I should, if the Lord should call me home, I got another place to go. Is that right? All of us will have to leave from here. Yeah. Hebrew 9, 27 says, It is appointed unto man once to die. But after this, then the judgment. John 14 and 6 says, Let not your heart be troubled. Yeah. In the right. Yeah. He believe in God, believe also in me, in my Father's house. Yeah. I mean, imagine that if it were not so, I would have told you. Yeah. I go now to prepare a place for you. Yeah. And if I go, uh, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there he may be also. Isn't that so? It, it's, not, it's not time for us to be angry with God. But, but it's a time for us to rejoice. Because God has blessed us. God has blessed us. Sister Catherine stayed here and saw all of her children grown, able to make a living for themselves. And you've heard it, you've heard it for yourself today that, that, that she loved the, the church. But this is a generation that runs from the church. It's the same before God to the people to live in Clarendon, Holly Grove, Toledo, Ohio, New York City, and they are 60, 70 years of age and have not joined the church. Look out! Many of our mothers and fathers, they love the church. John 11, 35, Jesus wept. Three, there are three particular recordings where our Lord wept. Uh, all, all had to do with uh, them, with him, and those who have believed him really did. In other words, those who really should have believed him did believe him. Jesus wept over the grave, over Lazarus. You remember that Lazarus had died? And they sent word to Jesus and said to him, tell him the one that he loved is now sick. He got the word before Lazarus died. But Jesus didn't come right away. He stayed a longer where he was. But the record here that when he showed up, Lazarus had died. Lazarus had been buried in the grave and now the family, yes, and friends had gone. But there was two sisters, Mary and Martha, and one of them met Jesus. Said to him, Lord, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. Isn't that so? I know it looks awful bad now, but Jesus 
it's still in charge. I know it looks rough out here, but the Lord is still watching. Someone said all night and all day the angel is watching over there. That's why, that's why a child of God don't have to worry about dying. All oh, Jesus did, he walked by the graveside and said to Lazarus, come forth. He did not call him three times, but he called him just once. And Lazarus got up out of the grave. Brother uh, John said earlier that uh, the disciples wept. Jesus wept because yeah, Jesus had come to God in Oka City. In Matthew 26 and 36, Jesus is now facing death. But he said to 89 of disciples, y'all stay here. And he took with him Peter, James, and John. And said, you sit here while I go yonder and pray. And you know the story that Jesus came to them three times and they were asleep. The third time he said to them, Yo, sleep on. Well, I want to tell you that when Jesus is, is in your life, you don't have to worry about the outcome. Thank God, thank God. Thank God that sister had faith. God. And I'm so glad to tell you that Jesus is able. I said Jesus is able to change our situation. Someone said he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Oh yeah.
going through. Put it in Jesus. Put it in Jesus' hand. I need somebody to read three scriptures for me right quick. You may be seated. Listen. Joshua 1 and 8. Joshua 1 and 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt prosper and have good success. Watch what she said to me. Joshua 1 and 8. Anybody who can read that book. This book of the law Listen, this generation is making up to their laws for themselves. When Jesus has already laid the law down, this book of the law shall not depart out of that man, but thou shalt meditate upon it. How? Day and night. Day and night. The moment I close this book and start trying to figure out a better way. So the Proverbs 14 and 12, here's what it said. There is a way which seemeth right unto man. But the end thereof is a way of that. Proverbs 14 and 12. Proverbs 14 and 12. Listen, man thinks he knows everything. I've been in one church now 45 years, and the third church, second church, 300 miles apart for 33 years. And at the third church, 19 years. And I'm still finding out that there's some grown people who don't know the word of God. Sister Catherine was saying, yeah. praying, yeah. and had words of encouragement. Yeah. You can't help nobody yeah. if you don't know the word you say. Watch it. Watch it. Is that right? Amen. This book. If you want to know how to train your children. Proverbs 22 and 6 says, train up a child. Not a 16, 17, 18 year old. But train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he go, he will not depart. Go, go to Proverbs 30. 30 and 11. Tell somebody it's in the book. It's in the book. There is a generation. There is a generation that curses their father. That curses. Now, now, nobody in Catherine day would curse that mother. But in this day, in this day, what you say? They curse it. All right. Read on. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes. This is a generation that is pure. Ain't no way in the world. A 20, 30 year old kid. No much is mama and daddy. You can't divide 300 in the third. No. It's impossible. For a young person to know more than mom and dad. She may not have a college degree, but she's been walking with the Lord. In all of our ways, acknowledge him and he shall. I make that point. There is a generation, all right? What is it? There is a generation. When a baby is born, 
That baby is filled. Is that right? But the nurses clean that baby up and then bring it to his mother. Are you with me? If young people, you ought to find some old person. Come on, I want to come by. I want, I want to sit down and I want you to. I'm not going to do all the talking. I just want you to talk to me. Most young people do all of the talking rather than listening to sound they got I know some people, not here, but I got some people in my church got degrees. Now you, you don't have to look at it, you look at it when you get home. But there's some of the biggest food there is. This is what they say. Psalm 14 and 1 say, The food has said, It is hard that there is no God. And yet they come to church Sunday after Sunday. Watch it, man! Come on! Are you I had to head and set up in my church. About three seats from the pool here. For 19 years. It didn't snow too much. It didn't get too hot. It didn't rain too much. But that head and showed up every Sunday. And when I heard about her, she had joined another church. I told her, church, I could have jumped and shouted all around that church. But then I discovered that God had her there for a reason. Watch it. Romans 8 and 28 says, We know that all things work together for good to them that love God and according to their prayer. You don't understand it now, but one of these days, by God, you'll understand. Everybody needs to be a church. Everybody needs a pastor. And all of these pastors. Who in here would get on books? Movie with no drive. <laughs> but that's what happens when you're in a church without a pastor. The pastor is the head. He's not God, but he is the overseer. He's the watchman. Let me close with these two scriptures Hebrews 13 and verse 17. Hebrews 13 and 17. Watch what this is. Obey them. Why put your name on the church roll and don't want to obey the pastor? <laughs> obey them. That have rules over you. For what? And submit yourself. And submit you. I ain't gonna deal with that too much, but listen. Matthew, Matthew 19. The wife, the head the, in Genesis. The man is the head of the wife. The wife is supposed to submit herself. And then Ephesians 5, Ephesians 6, it says, children, obey your parents. So they like going to church. You heard that you go from church to church. Well, you don't even have to church. Just go on. And some folks think this, this is the second month of the year 24. And some folks have put their foot in the church. Not here, but in Buffalo, in Buffalo and Toledo. They don't come to church unless it's a wedding or death. That's why I say, if you die out of Christ, they don't used to talk about pastor, can we have a few at the church? They go on to the funeral home. And the preacher can preach a funeral there. Are you with me? They still gonna get the word. But this is what it said. Obey them that have rules over you and submit to say whatever. For they watch for your soul. For they watch for your soul. Alright. And they that must give account. The pastor has to give an account. And I said to our people, they don't usually ask me, 
for a letter of recommendation and you'll cuss me out. You'll call me anything but a child of God. My letter ain't gonna help you. Go on down the street and ask somebody to give you a letter. The shepherd of the church has to give a report to God about your stewardship. Go to, go to first, I think it's 2 Corinthians 4 or 2. Moreover, it's in this book. 2 Corinthians, I think, in chapter 4 and verse 2. And that's the last one. Chapter 4, verse 2. But have renounced the. No, go to 1 Corinthians 4 and 2. Yeah. Moreover, it is required in steward that a man be found faithful. Moreover, it is required in a steward that a man be found faithful. Catherine was faithful. Yes, sir. And, and then look, look at the picture. She got a head on. Every now and then, some of the members come to me and say, Pastor, let's have dress down. And no, ain't going to be no dress down day here. I want enough dress down day when I was in Holly Grove. Passes on and all of that. And here God has blessed us with good clothes. And then we want to come to church with blue jeans. A hundred and forty dollars with holes in them. What says of that lady? What man gonna light a candle and then put it under a tree? A candle is to give light. And if we are saved, sanctified, we ought to let our light shine so that other people will know that Christ is in us. So the Catherine was saved, sanctified. Amen. And filled with the Holy Ghost. Yo, so we're so going to say one more song right quick. And I'm going to extend to those of the church. Now listen, this is church time. This ain't no auditorium gymnasium. Well, we're going to extend the invitation. There might be somebody who won't accept Christ as the Lord and Savior. Now listen to this. You can't join my church in New York and Toledo. But there are some local churches that you ought to be a part of. Where the pastor can treat, can teach you. And the Bible says in Rome 13 and 14, how can they hear without the preacher? You may not like it. You may not want it, but you need it. Is that right? And so while they sing for us a good song, if you're here today, just come on over here. That somebody take your name and we'll send you to the church you want to go. All right, listen to this quartet.
if the wind never quit blowing, Lord, if the great
Thank you. 